For now, let the professionals figure it out. And after they've found the cause, work slowly and surely toward getting better. Can't we just have more sex? Welcome back to the Booking Gaming. It's Otaku Tuesday! It sure is. And we're neck deep in Michiru backstory. Yeah, we're fresh off a Hermless episode. Oh, yeah. Probably not going to have very many in the flashbacks. Lots of moans, though. Not in the flashback. That was before. But it's a, it was a long episode, so, you know, fucking a lot of stuff happens. Uh, so Michiru made a friend. Yeah. That nothing bad will happen. Of course not. At, at, at all. It's not going to cause them any kind of mental distress that makes them have a second personality. Yeah, and have to go to a special school for people with severe problems. Yeah. For some reason. That school exists. But here right. we are. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, for a few days after answering that phone call, she didn't attend school. I was consumed by the fear something bad might have happened to her. Just like when I was a child, I knelt by my windowsill and whispered countless prayers. Please keep her safe, God. Please keep a smile on her face. No. God put a smile upon her face. Is that a thing? Uh, Coldplay song. Oh, is it? Like, that's actually the title of the song, I yeah. think. Yeah, is it like a new... I don't know anything of Coldplay past, no, it's like, old. parachutes. It's old. Or a cold rush of blood to the head or whatever that album is called. A warm blush of red, rush of blood, Rush, blush of blood. Blush of red, blood. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Rudd. <laughs> at, at school, I would hesitate in my classroom at the end of the day, thinking she might appear in the doorway like always to drag me off to play. But I was a ghost to, to myself in that class. I didn't dare make myself conspicuous. That's from the rush, rush of blood to the red, to the Paul Rudd head. Is it? Mm-hmm. Maybe I just... 2002. Don't. If I what's the name? Do you know what's the name of the song? God put a smile upon your face. I don't remember that song at all. I have that album. <laughs> I'm sure if I heard it, I'd be like, "Oh, this yeah, one." Yeah, probably. I reluctantly trudged up to the roof and waited for her. But no matter how patiently I waited, she never came. There was nothing but the steady passage of time. I did nothing but draw breath in a monochrome world. One day, somebody called my cell phone from a withheld number. I should probably change that ringtone, but I never use this thing. <laughs> I was who uses who puts their phone not on vibrate. I was scared to pick it up, but thinking it just might be her, I gathered up all my courage I could muster, all the courage I could muster, and pressed the answer button. I accidentally hung up. Hello? Do you have time to talk about your car's extended warranty? Actually, I have, yeah, I got a lot of time. I don't have a car, but I'll chat. Uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> On the other side of the line, I heard someone breathing harshly as if in pain. Ew, I got butt dialed while they're banging. Maybe it was nothing more than a random prank call from a stranger. But in my mind's eye, I saw her on the other end, the person I care about more than anyone else in the world. And I remembered her words on the roof that day. Oh. Was there supposed to be words there? <laughs> Back then, I wasn't able to give her a proper response. Yeah, what? Nope. Okay. Did she say them? Maybe she heard them. <laughs> I'd left so many things unsaid. I decided to convey those feelings to whoever this might be. Why? Why do you think you're alone? You have someone who thinks of you as a friend, who cares about you very much. So why do you keep trying to go off somewhere on your own? Fucking asshole. You didn't know how painful it is. You don't know how painful it is to be left behind, do you? That's why you keep trying to go away. Everybody loses things. Like, I lost my cell phone. I don't know where it is. <laughs> Being hated isn't unusual either. I don't have any object permanence. Where did it go? Yeah. I love you very much. So please don't go anywhere. If you're feeling sad right now, just just don't. Then let's become happy together, and then we'll be cured. I can't see me loving nobody but you. Well, I'm going to change my ringtone to that. <laughs> Come back here, and let's be together from now on. I don't know how to download ringtones, and I don't have any money on my Google Play account. Yeah. So you, it's free. I'm just going to record it from the radio. <laughs> let's be together yeah. from now on. The person on the other end of the line hung up without a single word. Felt as though I'd been abandoned, left behind. I squeezed my cell phone tightly in my hand. It broke. Juice came out. And thus <laughs> my obsession began. Even <laughs> now, I don't know who called me that day. It was, it, it was a telemarketer. Yeah. The next time I saw my friend was more than two weeks later. 
By that point, even sitting through class had become unbearably agonizing. And then same for everybody. I would spend the entire day on the roof waiting for her. And one day, completely out of the blue, she appeared before me once again. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> She's a magical girl. <laughs> right? Or she is an assassin. Ah. I couldn't say a word. There wasn't a trace of trace remaining of the girl who had always laughed so happily. Her school uniform was tattered and torn. Her hair looked like it had been hacked at with a knife. Her face, too, was full of bruises. I was on a bus, and it crashed into a... <laughs> Numerous wounds as cruel as anything the tutors had inflicted on me were openly visible even in the most conspicuous Did you put places. Put on the sleeve like that? <laughs> Something terrible must have happened. Something so terrible I didn't even want to imagine it. And it must have lasted a horribly long time. Just like that, there were tears in my eyes. God didn't protect her. I couldn't protect her. It, it's okay. This is what I wanted, you know? I did this, but I didn't want him to throw me away. I hadn't asked a question, but she answered it anyway. Rude. Those clipped <laughs> vague words weren't enough for me to understand what had happened to her, but I knew she was lying. I knew many sad, horrible things must have happened, things she couldn't possibly have wanted to happen. I slowly approached her, then wrapped my arms around her trembling body. It surprised even me. I hadn't expected myself to do such a thing. I'm a good hugger. <laughs> Just smells like milk again. <laughs> hmm. Thanks. You're sweet, Mishiru. That's... Not true. All right, fuck you then. No, it is. You really are a kind girl. You've heard the rumors, right? Well, they're true. Must think I'm an idiot, huh? <laughs> it's okay, you can laugh. <laughs> I'm always the one laughing. <laughs> laugh! In the classroom, my friend had become the subject of rumors. My classmate said she'd gotten to know a man decades older than her over the internet. A man with a wife and children. They said he treated her like his mistress. They said something about photos of her and that man getting scattered around the internet about him making her have sex with other men. Oh, God, she... Oh, okay, I was... Then. Okay. One morning, <laughs> there had been a naked photo of her taped on top of my desk. I kept it. I silently tore it off, shoved the paper into a trash can, and immediately left the classroom, slamming the door behind me as loudly as I could. But it was one of those, like, hydraulic release doors that you can't slam, so it was really embarrassing. <laughs> but none of it mattered to me, no matter what sort of thing she'd done. It didn't change the fact that she was my best friend. No, you're not. I'm the stupid one. <laughs> Guess you have a point. Rude. Making friends with me of all people, you must be pretty dumb. That's not true. That's impossible. You know, everyone hates me here. Don't really have any friends or anything. Well, uh, fuck me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to know something. It's, it's not like I became friends with you because no one else would give me the time of day or anything. That's Baka. why I became friends with you. <laughs> yeah. I scooped you up real quick because I was in dire need of a friend. <clears throat> I made friends with you because I liked you. That's true. If nothing else. But I guess it's probably pretty hard to believe a liar like me, huh? I wanted to say, of course I knew that, but my voice failed me. It felt as though a chunk of cardboard had wedged itself in my throat. I couldn't force out even a tiny squeak. Luckily, cardboard has the, <laughs> the ridges. Probably because I'm choking on cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> I really do think of you as my best friend, Mitiru. Sorry for being such a filthy excuse for a friend. Well, you just need a shower. I'm really sorry for being like this. I wanted to tell her that she wasn't filthy, but she did kind of smell bad. But I couldn't <laughs> say a word. All I could do was hug her tightly. I love him. Whatever he told me to do, I did it. I knew all along that stuff about leaving his wife was a lie. And I was okay with that. Even when I got pregnant, I knew it would <laughs> <laughs> cause him trouble. So I went to the hospital all by myself. That's enough. You don't have to talk about it. It's okay. Even when he told me to do it with other guys, I toughed it out. No matter how many guys it was, no matter how many times they wanted to go, I did my best. But I'm done. You see, he doesn't love me anymore. What clued you in? She gave me another pretend kiss on my cheek. Ew, germs. I closed my eyes and returned the gesture. Watching me, she laughed for just a moment. Then she slipped out of my arms. Scraps of her uniform danced in the wind like feathers blown loose from the wings of a bird in flight. She put her hands on the fence and swung herself over to the other side, graceful as a dancer. That would be so cool if it wasn't terrible. <laughs> me too. I'm done. I don't want to live in a world where he isn't interested in me. What a simp. 
I don't want to live in a world without him in it. Straddling the border between roof and sky. That's a fucking sick-ass line. Standing on the <laughs> line that divided this world from the next, she spoke to me. A single thought ran through my dazed brain. Maybe I'm not a clam. It's just like <laughs> the first time we met. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. I wanted to say, bring me with you. Yep. <laughs> you're not the only one, you know. I'm not interested in a world without you in it. So if you're going, I'll come along. Just don't leave me behind. Don't leave me here alone. I wanted to tell her. You joked that you loved me once, but I really do love you. That's the reason I'm still alive today. I wanted her to know, but I couldn't speak or move. My body felt like it was encased in concrete. I couldn't lift a single finger. Goodbye, Michiru. Well, uh... I wanted to say <laughs> the words, we're best friends, aren't we? Let's die together. But instead I just watched her in silence like a complete idiot. Someone load the save. See, I was right. I'm the stupid one after all. I'm going to go back to being a clam. A fucking clammy clam. I dropped world. my hamburger. Ketchup got everywhere. Well, that's a bunch of poopy nonsense. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. I just cowered. And then I tried to scramble over the rail to see her. To see the end. Why did I do that? But I couldn't do it. No matter what, I couldn't get myself over that fence. I couldn't feel... I could feel my feet giving way underneath me. I couldn't even keep myself upright. Why hadn't I died with her? I was right from the start. There was never a place for me here. Screwed up big this time, didn't I? Should have let myself think I could become a normal person. Should have thought I could find something like happiness. In the end, it vanishes. The bubble pops. In that case, it would have been better never to have gotten my hopes up in the first place. Just like my parents stopped expecting anything of me, I should have stopped expecting anything from the world. I heard the wail of a siren and a chorus of horrified screams from far away, and then I fainted. My body still twined awkwardly around that fence. The evidence of me killing her stacked against mm -hmm. me. Just before I lost <laughs> consciousness, I heard a sound of, like, the click of a television set falling silent. I don't know if it was a hallucination or not, but I heard it clearly. Oh, God. Pause. <laughs> when I woke up, I was lying in a hospital bed. It seemed I had been unconscious for quite a long time. Normally, there would have been police waiting on my bed to question me, but Dad took care of all that. Probably less out of concern for me than out of his desire to keep this troublesome situation from dragging on. He's got a lot of crimes that he doesn't want to be proud of. <laughs> I thought they'd discharge me soon enough, but I discovered that my chronic chest pain had grown dramatically more intense. My body was no longer physically capable of enduring a normal life. The doctor said... The shock of losing a close friend may have advanced the progression of the disease. But I didn't really know if that was true, and I couldn't really hear it past his thick accent. Either way, the pain in my heart was not so agonizing it could at times render me unconscious. My parents had more or less abandoned me, but I guess this miserable new development had managed to move them to pity. They decided to send me to America for a heart transplant operation. Personally, I wouldn't have minded just dying or to give me like an Iron Man heart. But it seemed like those two wanted to feel like caring parents, so I decided I might as well go along with it. Wait a minute, was that Batman that just went into that room? <laughs> <laughs> Things moved along behind my back. Hundreds amounts of money traded hands, although I didn't know the details. They didn't tell me much of anything about the donor, and I wasn't particularly interested either. Oh. All they said was I'd be receiving the heart of a brain-dead girl of the same age as me. Oh, dear. Oh. I'm sure it must have been a really big, complicated operation, but since that day on the rooftop... Somehow I don't have scars. I'd been living like an empty husk. Can't really say it felt like much of an ordeal. I don't have a heart transplant scar. <laughs> they carried me off on an airplane to a place where I couldn't understand a word anyone they was saying. Over it. <laughs> That's how it works. Yeah, of course. The doctor <laughs> put me under anesthesia, and I fell asleep. Before I knew it, I was right back in Japan. It really did seem to happen in the blink of an eye. I didn't have time to feel much of anything. It's weird. People aren't cartoons in America. My procedure apparently went about as smoothly as possible. They pumped me full of immunosuppressants to prevent my body from rejecting the new heart. But I recovered without any of the sickness that often results as a side effect. My reaction to this news was indifferent at best. Didn't even feel particularly strange having another person's organ inside my body. <laughs> Sometimes I almost <laughs> doubted whether they'd really operated on me. Because there's no scar. Of yeah. course, touching the scar on my chest was enough to convince myself it had to be true. But really, what difference did it make either way? 
The lump of flesh inside me constantly thumping away was different from the one that had been there yesterday. That was all. Nobody was going to care. Nothing important had changed. My doctor celebrated my remarkable recovery from the surgery as a miracle. There was a cake. So enthusiastic, you might have thought my good fortune was his own. My parents had relieved expressions on their faces as well. Expressions that seemed to read, now we don't have to worry ourselves about this girl anymore. I, I mean, I could, if I died, I, okay, whatever. <laughs> the many months I spent in various hospitals came to an end, and I began to recuperate at home. That was when the first signs of the change began to appear. The change? I was becoming a woman. Apparently, I was saying <laughs> uncharacteristic things to my parents. I was talking and behaving in ways I usually wouldn't. I had a haunted heart. Almost as if I'd become a completely different person. Yeah. Haunted Heart is my favorite hymn song. <laughs> my parents were incredulous at first, half suspecting some kind of elaborate prank. But as they knew, I wasn't exactly a practical joker by nature. I wasn't some kind of Dennis the Menace. I wasn't consciously aware of any of this. My alternate personality came at the price of gaps in my memory. Maybe I was sleepwalking or turning into a different person without even realizing it. Hulking out, per se. A doctor diligently studied my brain activity and asked me all sorts of questions, but in the end, he could only offer a vague conclusion. You're stupid. This phenomenon <laughs> can't be explained by modern medicine. I know it. I'm just stupid. <laughs> Ultimately, the adults decided that the powerful psychological impact of losing a friend in front of my eyes had led to changes of my personality. But again, I didn't really carry their way. I responded with my usual alice, so that's cool. Whatever. I'm going to go I'm play Pac-Man. I don't care that my friend died, whatever. <laughs> I'm too cool for that. The gaps in my memories became frequent, and as time passed, they grew longer, harder to ignore. I one time woke up with different pants. The other me who showed up in those chunks of lost time seemed surprisingly competent. From what I gathered, she was much more sociable than I was, and a lot better at schoolwork as well. One night, Score. <laughs> I noticed dinner was a little <laughs> extravagant. Dad smiled across the table and told me it was a reward for trying it so hard. It made you lazy. It was kind of a strange experience, but I didn't really mind. I mean, if things were going smoothly, who cared if I remember doing the things I was being praised for or not? Suddenly, I had like 12 friends I didn't know what to do with. <laughs> and yeah. the pattern continues. I found myself requiring a number of friends as well. Of course, I'd gotten to know them during the blank spaces in my memory, so I didn't really know what sort of people they were. And like three of them were named Jim. It's weird. Without any effort on my part... Lots of people began greeting me in a friendly tone at the school or on the road to school. After saying hi, they'd usually ask, what's wrong? Not feeling so good today? Seems like they saw the usual me as the sick Michiru, and the person who showed up in those blank periods of lost time as the normal, cheerful Michiru. Sky. <laughs> what's wrong? You seem a little down late today. I was lying down. <laughs> that explains it. Oh. In my room one evening when Dad right, stopped by to check day. upon me. That's not like you. Come on. Where's my cheerful Michiru? Not knowing what else to do, I force a strange smile onto my face. Are you winning, son? You're creeping I me mean, out. I mean, daughter, it's all right. I'm sure you'll feel better tomorrow. We'll say goodbye to sad Michiru soon enough. Oh, I didn't have enough time for a drink. Smiling, Dad left the room and closed the door behind him. And all of a sudden, an image flashed into my head. An image of a girl frozen in flight. It was the girl who'd left me so abruptly, my best friend who'd abandoned this world. Her final goodbye echoed inside my head, rebounding off the walls of my skull, because there's nothing else in here. The world was ter <laughs> the word was terribly sharp. Every time it clanged against the bone, it felt as though someone was drilling me open from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Ah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Dad, don't die. Huh? <laughs> Just going to go bang someone who's not your mom. I mean, totally your mom. <laughs> Trembling with fear and pain. <laughs> I dove into my bed in search of refuge. Greasy sweat broke out on my forehead. I should probably shower. From that Hamburg. <laughs> I swallowed a handful of those sleeping pills my doctor had prescribed, pulled a blanket over my head, and squeezed my eyes shut. If I can get past this, I'll become the cheerful Michiru again. I can't break down now. I'll say... I silently repeated those words to myself. And soon enough, drowsiness wrapped me up in a thick, sticky cocoon. Gross. Blanket and all. Finally, I'll be able to sleep. I'll pull through after all. I'm a chrysalis. <laughs> I'm, I'm Pupa. It was just just so soft and running hastily through my mind, just as I stood on the border. Hang on, I'm adjusting. Between reality and dreams, when I heard the unfamiliar voice from outside my blanket. Uh, should it? I guess it should. I friend? guess it should be Michiru. Yeah, but it's in Michiru's head. 
It's the other voice that I was like, where it's like her, but less no. so. Yeah, okay. It's all right. Calm down. You don't need to worry about a thing. I didn't understand in the slightest how this was supposed to be all right. Hearing the voice of some strange woman as I tried to fall asleep really didn't seem to qualify. I'll cover for your weak points. I mean, we're going to be together forever, right? We should be friends. Yes, let's be friends. The instant I heard those words, I felt my heart pound violently. A sharp white hot pain spread from my chest throughout my entire body as if traveling through my blood vessels. Don't call yourself that. I only have one best friend. I only need one. And she's totally alive. <laughs> I remember the doctor offhandedly mentioning a phenomenon known as cellular memory. In rare cases, patients receiving heart transplants that seem to inherit aspects from the previous owner's tastes or memories. He didn't seem to believe in the idea, because it's a heart, not a brain, but maybe it was real. Maybe that had happened to me. No, this wasn't anything so minor. The former's owner's entire personality had slipped inside me, complete and distinct from my own, and now she was talking to me, declaring herself my best friend. I wasn't about to put up with that. I would punch myself in the face. Another best friend <laughs> was the last thing I wanted. So I started punching myself in the heart. She called herself Tyler Durden. Take that, stupid bitch. I hate you. You don't get to decide who my best friend is. Throwing off the covers, my pulse pounding in fear of my own body. I shouted at the disembodied voice. It's all right. I just want to help you out. I don't want your help. She was the only one who could help me. I couldn't even tell if this was reality or some insane nightmare. My terror escalated into frenzy. I ripped out clumps of my own hair, bit my own arms, and it really hurt because my teeth are sharp, and kicked things all <laughs> over the room until my feet bled. But it wasn't enough. I grabbed a box cutter from my desk, grasped it tightly in my hands, and listened carefully trying to figure out where the voice was coming from. So when fucking What's-Her-Face came out with a box cutter, it really sucked. Yeah. <laughs> I'll cut a bitch. The voice was the cause of this pain. It flowed through my body with the blood thumping out of my heart, bringing agony with it. I had to get that voice out of my body. I had to or I was going to go crazy. Now she's going crazy. I dropped my hamburger. <laughs> with that thought, I cut out my wrist with the blade, too much ketchup. trying to drain the voice out of me along with the blood. But no matter how, much, how my arm bled, the voice remained securely inside my body. Missed me. In that case, I had no choice. I needed to uproot it directly. I needed to get rid of that foreign entity pulsing away inside of me. Now you gotta kiss me. <laughs> I pointed the blade at my own chest and stabbed as hard as I could. Oh, God. Stupid sternum. It wasn't the sharpest blade, but it broke the skin easily enough. Slowly, it gouged its way through my flesh, just a little further, and it reached the heart. The invasion would be over soon. I'd be rid of the voice. I felt relief washing over me, but just then I smelled that distinctive mixture of cigarettes and strange women, and realized that my father had entered the room with, like, three or four strange women. My God, Michiru. Why? Before I knew it, my room had become a disaster scene. The shattered and torn remnants of my belongings stained dark red with splashes of fresh blood. I am a squirter. The box cutter <laughs> fell from my hands and hit the ground with a dull thunk. The sound abruptly brought me back to reality. Dad's familiar face was so contorted that he looked like an entirely different person. I had to smile. I had to reassure him. I'm okay. Merely a flesh wound. But different words came out of my mouth. Daddy, have I gone insane? Yes. <laughs> Dad hugged me closely for the first time in many years. Eat but your it, blood. <laughs> but it was very different from that girl's embrace. Even though he was holding me close, I could feel a vast chasm looming between us. Oh, that's the hole in my chest. <laughs> that very night, I was admitted to a new hospital. Pause. Not that I had any choice in the matter. The same doctor was here, though. They had the same roof, too. It was kind of a building that has iron bars in every window. Even though you could only crack them open a few centimeters anyway. Fucking stupid. It was very quiet there. All of the patients were tranquil and sedate. Sometimes I felt as though I'd wandered into some foreign corner of the afterlife. All except for Johnny, the tackling Alzheimer's patient. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> they told me that people suffering from illnesses of the mind were gathered here. But I never saw anyone thrash around violently or scream or rant at phantoms. Everyone had a con content, vaguely dopey little smile on their faces. <laughs> and for the most part, they passed the days quietly watching television. It's like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Where's the chief? I need him to throw the water thing. Water fountain. Sure. I've never seen that. Oh, that's a book, too. And or, or read that. The guy escapes by getting the giant uh, Native American chief guy to rip a water fountain out of the ground and throw it through one of the windows. Oh, okay. Yeah. The story's told from the point of... Well, the book is told from the point of view of the chief. 
Gotcha. There were times when I found it's actually really good for a book that I was forced to read. <laughs> there were times when I found these constant, unchanging smiles frightening. But I got the idea soon enough. Basically, it was a place where you could live without getting tangled up in your emotions. You could pass the time peacefully. I played a lot of checkers. Every Friday was bingo night. I never won. Because I'm dumb. <laughs> I don't know any numbers. Only thinking about pleasant things. To put the opposite spin on it, in that place you weren't allowed to think about anything else. When they let us outside for a walk, the metal shackles that usually bound my legs were removed. In exchange, they looped a rope around our waists. That seems a bit extreme for a suicide case. All the patients were tied together on that one length of rope, like children pretending to be a train, or prisoners in the old times. Even though we are all grown up now, I always thought that was kind of silly. It's about silliness. <laughs> <laughs> so silly. The medicine, and then some guy that looked like George Clooney that was tied to me and one other guy told us about a treasure that he knew about. <laughs> so we escaped. And then it was oddly close to Homer's Odyssey. The medicine they gave me there made my mind feel pleasantly clear. The other personality didn't emerge. That eerie voice didn't crawl through my veins like a swarm of insects. It was like living inside a tightly closed music box. Boring. But very peaceful. I stayed in there for a long time. I didn't talk with anyone. For the most part, I just stood quietly by the wall trying not to stand out. Trying to shrink myself down to the point where the world would overlook me. I'd look at the weird little divots in the wall because it was that spackle stuff. <laughs> and if I had crossed my eyes a little bit, it would make like little faces. And I'm like, oh, I could draw that. I could take these shapes and turn them into drawings. And then I never did it. Because I became a clam again. <laughs> but one day, I caught my chains on the leg of a chair and tripped to the ground. That had never happened before. So I wasn't sure what to do. So I just kind of like hid there. <laughs> Fortunately, no one insulted me or yelled angrily. I said a few patients nearby put their hands to their mouths and giggled softly in amusement. I, you, you. I liked hearing that sound. And lying there on the ground, an idea occurred to me. Maybe if I fell on purpose, I could make people laugh again. Oh. That's when I joined clown college. The <laughs> class clown. <laughs> the next day, I tripped again. Again, the people who noticed laughed a little. The day after that, I deliberately spilled a glass of water. And once more, I heard the pleasant sound of laughter. Emboldened by my success, I spoke. I need a tailor. <laughs> Cause I ripped my pants. <laughs> Silly cops still draw a lot of tone. More people laughed than before. Their voices were warm and gentle. I found a way to make myself useful by devoting myself to clowning around. I could at least make others smile. From that day on, I acted out a sillier version of myself, an exaggerated funny caricature of me, and I sustained myself on a sugary sweet diet of laughter. Nom, nom, nom. All right then, from now on, I'd go with this way of life. The pretending didn't bother me. It was worth it to do something for other people. It was worth it to have something to live for. Nobody had appreciated me before because I wanted them to like the real me. Problem was, the real me wasn't any good. So I might as well just pretend. All I had to do was act out the most convenient role. Force out the most convenient emotions. Become someone who put a smile on people's faces. Even if that meant the real me disappeared entirely, I didn't care. I was a little anxious about whether someone as stupid as me could even act convincingly, but I had no choice but to try. Among the patients, I gained a niche. Or niche? niche. I don't know. I would say niche. I, yeah, I do too, but apparently that's wrong. There's a lot of people. It's like a thing now that people are like, no, it's niche. You're saying it wrong. Oh. But I don't know. Niche just seems, I don't know. As a weird but funny girl. Sound off in the comments. <laughs> Is it niche or niche? As I grew into the role, I became more lively. In time, the doctor decided I was on my way to a full recovery and politely ejected me from the hospital. Oh no, now who do I make laugh? I wish they hadn't done it from the third floor. <laughs> they did it in a comical way and launched me with a d d ejection button. I landed face first into a pie. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my Everyone place. left. I left it. <laughs> I lost my place at the world, but my parents soon found me another. Apparently they'd heard somewhere or other about this special school that only gathered students with complicated uh, circumstances. I was enrolled in Mahama Academy soon after my return. And I was like, a circus stance? That's perfect. I'm <laughs> a clown. I can run on playing <laughs> the clown in this school. I thought it would be nice to keep everyone laughing, and none of them really laughed. They all just call me stupid. And in fact, that's <laughs> yeah. just how things turned out. <laughs> they ignore her here, too. Yeah. The days rolled past pleasantly <laughs> enough for the most part. Except for, like, Machina, but that's just because she, like, uses her. Machina just, yeah, just uses her for her own shits and giggles. But every once in a while, I'd abruptly remember that this, too, was nothing but an artificial make-believe world. When everyone laughed together, I wasn't smiling from the heart. And over time, my uncertainty grew. I didn't want to lose what I'd found there, here. 
but I didn't want to grow dependent on it. The more I pretended to be someone I wasn't, the less I understood what I wanted to do. Did an imposter like me really belong here in the first place? And then I saw an anime with a tsundere. It felt like I was living <laughs> yeah. in an anti so ant lion's pit. That, where's that part come in? Right. She's got to like watch something or see something and be like, that's what I want to yeah, be. That's, or, yeah, that's what my personality is. There was nowhere else for me to go. No way out of the rut. All I could do was struggle not to fall. And we're back. So that's me. I'm sorry, I fell asleep. I, what? I went back to my book. I'm, yeah, I paid like ten dollars for this Pokemon Go ticket, so <laughs> I've been. Yeah, I have to play. I'm catching a lot of Sobbles right now. <laughs> Having delivered her lengthy story in one uninterrupted setting, sitting but not one interrupted ep- uninterrupted episode. Of course, Michiru finally pauses, her face lined with fatigue. I've been taking medicine to suppress the other person inside of me. I've been living as a make-believe character to make people laugh. That's who I am, so thanks for bringing that up. Thanks for sleeping with the legs of me. Ha <laughs> ha, funny. Now laugh! Can you go now? Even if that was fake, even if you were just pretending to love me, thanks for doing it. I guess it made me so happy that I almost let myself misunderstand, but don't worry, I know it's all a lie. I'm a stoop. <laughs> when you hugged me, or kissed me, or did the other stuff, I would always think, me. I don't want this moment <laughs> to end. But everything ends, doesn't it? Everybody goes away eventually. Pretty scary, isn't it? Woo! Stop it. Sorry. <laughs> Scratching my head, I search for the words Michiru needs to hear. They prove surprisingly easy to find. They're there. What you need right now isn't this fatalistic pessimism. Did you not listen to the story? I'm dumb. It's medical treatment. A visit to the hospital would be a good start. Your problem's too complex to face on your own. No, I just eat this just, candy. Yeah, you know, the last hospital I went to put me in fucking chains. Me true. I know it's not candy. <laughs> <laughs> For now, let the professionals figure it out. And after they've found the cause, work slowly and surely toward getting better. Can we just have more sex? Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised he's suggesting this. When he was with Sachi, he was like, let's do this extremely complicated. Yeah. <laughs> I need you to kill yourself or me or something. Yeah, I don't remember. Mom. That was it. Kill your mother. I think I understand the general outline of the situation. The memories of her organ donor have influenced Michiru's mind. Or so she thinks, at least. Not exactly a common phenomenon, a phenomenon, but apparently not entirely unprecedented. We do live in an anime. Whatever the case may be, what the girl needs is appropriate treatment in, in an appropriate setting. And I've been doing a bang-up job so far. Yeah, so I gotta go back to the hospital, no matter what. Like, what if I just, like... What if I just, like, blow you? Could we just stay here? Okay. All right. Yeah. That works every time. <laughs> I'd strongly recommend it. I doubt they'll keep you there longer than a week for an examination like this. Hopefully I'll visit you, unlike I did Sachi. I probably won't, though. <laughs> and I'm worried about you. I don't want people to know that we're dating. <laughs> worried, huh? <laughs> That'd make me happy if you mean it. Why would I lie? Because you do a lot. I don't lie. I didn't dislike that make-believe game of yours. I probably could have found another way to kill time, like a book. But playing or around walking. with you was enjoyable. Really? I'm not lying. <laughs> okay, I believe you. <laughs> How many times do you want me to make me say the exact same thing? At least seven. I'm sorry, but you enjoyed being with me? That makes me really happy in the pants. I don't want you to disappear on me, Michiru. I would find that unpleasant. Unpleasant? Why? Because then I couldn't give you the snuggles. The, sh- the snuggles. That's true, I do like the snuggles. This is seriously the last time I'm going to repeat myself. Because the last time I spent with you wasn't half bad. What? Say that again? I mean, because the time I spent with you. Did I add a word in there? The last time. Oh, yeah. Because the time I spent with you wasn't half bad. Okay. I do- it's kind of like a half glass full situation. Say, Could you say that a little more romantically? I take Michiru by the shoulders and look her straight in the eyes. You're freaking me out. You're living in the present, Michiru. Don't, present? Don't let yourself get caught up in the past. You can't fix it. Yes, here's your rock. <gasps> <laughs> You're my rock. What's done can't be undone. <laughs> but the future is still yours to shape. 
Incredibly obvious, yes, but it doesn't hurt to keep that in mind. Whoa, right now your future is on the line. You need to take control of it. You need Seize to take the fish. You need to take control of your microphone. What is going on I don't know, there? it's swinging around like a crazy man. With that said, I kiss Michiru briefly on the lips. She turns down her face in embarrassment and hesitates for a moment, studying the floor as if deciding which words to pick up off the ground. We probably shouldn't have left Scrabble out. <laughs> Thank you, G. Didn't this used to say monkey? In the end, she chooses extremely simple ones. I play Quijibo. <laughs> Challenge. What's Quijibo? A giant angry ape. Oh. Oh, God. He chase, chases people on bikes. <laughs> <laughs> extremely simple, but not half bad. A pretty respectable choice, actually. We're going to get to a point like 10 years down the line where we've played so many of these... And like come up with so that like it's all gonna like blend yeah, together. We're gonna be in a so retirement home. Like remember when we got chased by that? that <laughs> yeah. We got chased Our, by that what, pink-haired girl that burned down a school on a bike, and we fell into a crevice. And yeah, it's all just gonna become one. Yeah, it's just like one long convoluted anime. Yeah, I can't wait for somebody to make the timeline and oh, actually God. piece it together yeah. and make it make sense. Good luck. Yeah, make it all in the same universe. Yeah. Uh, the the book and gaming visual novel connected universe uh-huh. the the big Q? the the big vic I don't know the big dick daddy hell yeah that's what they call me I read that okay sorry anyway whatever the fuck they were talking about <laughs> yeah. if you say I should go for an examination Yuji I'll do it I'll do whatever you tell me to do wink tomorrow even <laughs> I mean the earlier the better right I'm lying. True. Leave the arrangements with the hospital to me. Fuck. (laughs) I'll get something worked out. Thanks. Sorry to be such a nuisance. You're not a nuisance. But if you're feeling guilty anyway, you can show me your gratitude once you're feeling better. That's a little weird. Using my body? No. Don't be an idiot. But I don't know how to be anything else. (laughs) Just kidding, kind of. Unless. Um... If we're gonna do, if we're gonna go to the hospital tomorrow, can we leave early in the morning? That's when they get the fresh lollipops. <laughs> I don't mind, but why? And it'd be embarrassing if the other girls saw, you know. So well, yeah, that's it. Could we make it at like five in the morning, please? Sure, not a problem. For now, you should get some rest. I mean, it's during my run time, but I guess <laughs> we can run to the hospital. You got it. Hey, Yuji, I, I love you. Not psych as if I just like you a lot. <laughs> I would spend all my time with or you. Or anything. And Wait, I couldn't what? <laughs> imagine my life without you. She delivers this line in such a subdued, quavery tone of voice that I can't help but laugh. Yes, mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was funny. Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right, then. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, see ya. I got a shower. <laughs> Oh, well, looks like I'm going to end up indebted to Cheesy Roo yet again. I spend my walk to the principal's office ruminating on Michiru's story. Her tale's still fragmentary, and the plot's tangled. Doesn't even make sense. She's a fucking liar. (laughs) Deciphering it is going to be difficult. Might even turn out to be one of those books you can spend a lifetime on without ever finding a conclusive interpretation. This makes less sense than that Flash movie. But even so, I've decided to keep turning the pages. Why? Did that, did somebody ask me? Because I'm going to answer. Feels like the thing to do. Simple as that. Yeah, good job, me. <laughs> Self five. After we parted yesterday, Michiru slept soundly through the night, sharing the I burden... I checked in on her with the camera I installed. <laughs> she'd carried in secret for so long, even momentarily, must have brought her some relief. I explained the situation to Cheesy Roo and had her arrange for an investigative stay in the nearby hospital. Of course, this involved enduring a great deal of sarcasm and snipping and awkward flirting and shirtless push-ups, but our principal wasn't about to refuse to help a student in need of medical attention. I can't say whether she was moved more by pseudo-parental affection or a professional concern for her responsibilities, but I suppose it hardly matters. It's the shirtless push-ups. It's gotta be. Early the next morning, I prepare to see off Michiru. Normally, I'd be pulling on my sweats, 
and heading out for a run right about now, but today I'm skipping that. Oh my god. I've eaten extra beans in preparation. <laughs> Cheat day. Bean day. <laughs> An exercise routine is only meaningful when you follow it faithfully. There's no point in doing it at all if you take days off. But I understand that some things are more important than a training schedule. That's actually false. You're supposed to take days off. I feel like maybe that's changed. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it's important to have rest days to let your body recover so you can continue. Yeah. I don't know. I is don't this, exercise, so fuck if I know. Is, is this the, the, the route where he, like, actually is... Helpful? Somewhat normal human being. Maybe. Doubtful. Some things can withstand a day's neglect. Others can be lost in a heartbeat. Difficult as it is, to, as it can be to accurately identify the difference, prioritizing them appropriately is absolutely crucial. The hospital says you need a different heart. I'm going to give you mine, and I will live inside you forever. You did want <laughs> me to stay inside. That's true. We'll be together forever. I head upstairs to Mishiru's room and knock lightly on the door, but there's no answer. Two bits. She's most likely still preparing for her departure. I really hate when I knock on people's door and they don't answer. Yeah, it's not It still great. gets to me to this day. Yeah. It's generally understood that women take time to get themselves ready to go anywhere. Deciding it best not to rush the girl, I patiently stand by in front of her room for some time. Isn't this the girl that was like two hours early for your, or like five or six hours early for your date, fully dressed? Yeah, and the last time you knocked on our door and she didn't answer, she had overdosed and was dying. Yeah. Finally deciding that we need to get going, I call out her name. Hey, Sachi. Uh, um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Michiru. Michiru. But again, there's no response. I suppose it's a little early for her. Maybe she's still sleeping. I don't like this. Mm. <laughs> Michiru, everything all right in there? I think she ran away. She, like, bailed. At last, oh, there's a quiet mind. answer from inside the room. Call my name a few more times, then I'll come out. That's the rule. You're looking in a mirror. Oh, she's Beetlejuice. <laughs> Strikes me as a bit of a strange request, but I obey. Michiru. 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 Ah, the crowd goes wild. <laughs> After repeating her name numerous times, I hear a rummaging sound from within. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> a moment later, Michiru eases open the door, dragging along a small suitcase as if it were loaded with bricks. The girl's wearing strangely dressy clothing. What's with the outfit? It's cute. Yeah. Huh? What do you mean? Nothing, really. I'm, um, well, I mean, we're not going to be able to see each other, so I wanted to be in pretty close when we said goodbye. Sure, but you're only going for a week or so, right? You'll be back soon enough. What's the point? Yeah, they're definitely not going to commit me or anything. This is why they say you don't understand the female heart, Yuji. Who says that? Is it that fucking bitch, Yumiko? And I've had two of them, so I would know. Oh, who's they? Who's I, Yumiko? A, a, <laughs> I, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, S Steven Sondheim. I've done that one before. Uh, oh. S Sebastian Stan. I've probably done that one before too. Uh, S S Sally Field. Sebastian Bach, huh? That's Johan. I guess Sebastian is his middle name, yeah. isn't it? Uh, this is kind of a downer. Michiru pouts a little, a clear shade of melancholy in her eyes. It's my favorite color. Seeing her take this attitude, I feel a twinge of reluctance myself. Maybe the girl could stay. My help might be enough to pull her through the worst of it. Oh, yeah, don't. you're always great at don't. that. Maybe we should blow the school up. Um, what's wrong? You got a scary look on your face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reenact the trauma and jump off the roof. <laughs> this time you watch it. Yeah. That'll That's fix it. That's what you need. Why is nobody herming? It's pissing me off. Right? Hmm. Well. Something's wrong. Oh, God. Oh, uh, no. Oh, uh -oh. dear. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. no. Oh, fuck. Oh, save. Oh, yeah. Good call. Should we look it up? Yes. We've looked up all of them. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you the answer, though. You okay. i see if you pick the right one, because that's what you did to me, I think. Okay. We'll be right back while you look that up. Okay. It'll take me a while. I'm bad at Googling. Yeah, that's true. All right, we're back. Okay. So, so I have to try to figure this out? Yeah, I mean, that's what you did to me. I know. I'm normally the me, one who looks it up. Because you made me the you made me do the Sachi choice. Yeah. So. Um, and I think I got it wrong. I yeah, did, I, I think did, so. I, I did. <sighs> are we going to do the bad endings for this game? I feel like the bad endings for this game are really bad. 
We did the we did the Sachi one. Didn't we? Yeah, we watched because we Oh yeah. Yeah. Because we were like, wait, this is not good. Yeah, because we just chose what we didn't look it up, I don't think. That's right. Well, we're gonna look it up this time. Yeah, because this one could be like I don't want to do it and then it's like super long or something. I okay. Here's where my thought is on this. Mm-hmm. Cause the kiss before you go type of thing is like, okay, yeah, well, you want her to go to the hospital because she needs the hospital. That's the responsible thing to do. But she's also packed like she's not coming back. Yeah. Like she knows that she's not going to come back. Like this is, she's actually going to bail or like. She's expecting to be there or. Either that, or she's not like gonna all of kill her herself, stuff is in there or, or something. Like, yeah, like, like I think she's a clam. Maybe she's, maybe it is full of bricks, and she's tying it to herself to get to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> but it's like the "don't leave" thing it seems like that's irresponsible to be like, "No, just stay here with me." Yeah, I'll fix this myself. Yeah, that's. Uh, but he does fix things because he's somehow <laughs> stupidly smart. I'm going to say, just because if I was playing this on my own, I'd be like, you know what? I bet you're supposed to want her to stay so you don't miss her or whatever. Because she still thinks that, like, you're not into her. But if you say, let's stay together, she'll be like, oh, maybe he does love me, blah, 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 blah. So that, mm-hmm. that's my choice. Let's stay together. You are wrong. Damn it! <laughs> God! Fine. How about a kiss before you go is the correct answer, apparently. Son of a bitch. How about a kiss before you go? No. Damn it! (laughs) I'd make believe again? Oh, see, well, this is what I was talking about, him being like, I do actually like you. Please don't go away. No, just a kiss. Because that's all he had to do. Oh, Oh, thank God. This is the good ending. She brought it back. Just a kiss, is it? Very well, then. The way you put that slightly pisses me off. Are you mocking me? Yeah. <laughs> That's so, so cute. I was actually imitating a certain someone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, who's that? Hmm? What's all this? Can you say so? Company Sachi, why are you here? This isn't your route. Get the fuck out of here. Well, I woke up unusually early this morning, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to burn, burn the school down. To do a little waxing. Oh. I got a Brazilian. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where my mind went. I'm currently repeating the process of dumping milky white liquid all over the floors and wiping it up. We did that yesterday. <laughs> no, no kidding. And what about you two? Is something going on? We're just, um, well. We're having sex. Wait. We're, we're going to have her looked at. I'm looking at her right now. And I like what I see. <laughs> looked at. That's right. Michiru collapsed from anemia a little while ago, remember? As a precaution, we're taking her to a hospital for a thorough examination. Nothing too serious. She'll be back better than ever in no time. What? Is that so? Well, I just so happen to be a trained physician. But as you say, at least it doesn't sound as though a lengthy stay will be necessary. Say hello to the Paul ceiling for me. I miss it. <laughs> I'll let the others know later. Try not to worry too much. Yes, certainly. I will keep my concern to moderate levels. Oh god, they're slightly above moderate. Let me calm down. That's right. It's not like you need to worry or anything. It's fucking... I'm cool. So, okay, so, I'm um, well... Go step out for a minute. Yes, certainly. That was a shock. I had no idea Sachi was there. I almost kissed her. Really? I saw her hovering around out of the corner of my eye. Well, I'm not a fucking ninja. I don't fucking know it. Then how about you say something, dickhole? Wait, don't tell me that's what you asked about the kiss. Was it a prank? No. I like when people watch. I had nothing to do with it. How about it? Want one? Yeah, of course. No, it's okay. I mean, Sachi popped up out of nowhere and all of the mood kind of got ruined. Her. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that back. I, I don't know why I went so long without it. You're right. In that case, let's get going. I'll carry your luggage. Thanks, but you don't need to do that either. I can handle it myself. Oh, God, it's fucking heavy. You don't want me to find out what's in it? It's still those. Dragging her wheeled suitcase loudly along the path, Michi returns her head slowly, surveying the campus. 
Now that I'm actually saying goodbye to campus, it's a little <laughs> hard to leave. Don't get all that sentimental. It's just a campus. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be back soon enough. I hate that word. I hate the way we say that, but now we're never going to be able to not. You're just way too cool-headed, Yuji. As, you, as always. Haven't you caught on that I'm not coming back? <laughs> yeah, she doesn't want you to look at her suitcase. All right, here we are. Watch yourself out there. I didn't bring Good the luck, mirror. Kid. Yeah, I'm going to get going. Ah, oh, but first, um, well. Yes, we can kiss. I need cab fare. Uh, yeah. What's wrong? Need to piss? No, I did that already. No! You really are a jerk, you know that? I mean, what you said before? Um, the, do you actually want us to call you Juicy Yuji? <laughs> yes. And the kiss? Right. I want one after all. Are you sure? Yeah. Sachi's staring at us, you know. <laughs> Why is she just standing in the window all weird like that? Jesus Christ. There. I'm cleaning the stairs. What, what are you doing here? I'm always here. Why? Well, Mitru-sama, that would be because you told me to step out. Accordingly, I left the premise of the school of our school and had sex with another man. There is no what? other reason for my <laughs> stepping out. I wanted to cover all the bases. <laughs> there is no other reason for my presence here. Is there a problem? Oh, is that it? Got it. All right. Can I ask you for just one more favor before I leave? Okay. What is your pleasure? Can you kindly fuck off the edge of my dick? <laughs> um, I, I that guess. That poses quite a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a penis? <laughs> Turn around for a minute. Yes, certainly. That is what it's all about. <laughs> Hurry up and kiss me. Mm -hmm. Michiru practically collapses mm -hmm. against me and I press my lips firmly against hers. Mm -hmm. Our hot breath mingles together. Mm -hmm. The wet sound of saliva swapping fills the air. Mm -hmm. Like a little chipmunk. Mm -hmm. Don't listen! I'm just... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just eating mm -hmm. gummy bears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. hoo -ah. The scent of a woman. Good enough. Yeah, I'm satisfied. I'm easy. Whew, Sachi, you can turn around now. Yes, I shall now return to my prior facing. That was hot. <laughs> Michiru's cheeks are slightly red, but Sachi gives no outward indication of curiosity or suspicion. So what's that dick taste like? What? <laughs> what? Why would I know that? Sorry, I had a little business to take care of with Yuji. Anyway, this is for you. Mm, kiss, kiss, more kisses. The key to your room? Yeah, if you I, get bored... I leave it to you. Yeah, she, she's not coming back. If you get bored while I'm not around and don't have anywhere else to clean, you can tidy up my room. Yes, by all means. I'll spew cloudy liquid all over it. No, I already did that. I, I'm going to rip some fucking thick-ass vape clouds. <laughs> can you stop saying that? All right, here we go. Michiru takes a deep breath and then turns to face me once more. Are you going to, like... Come with me. Yuji, thanks for everything. That sounds like something that somebody would say when they're planning to come back. Why have you not called on yet? And with those words, she bows her head deeply. I would be so convinced that this was the wrong choice. Yeah, okay. Cut it out. Coming from you, that just feels weird. <laughs> I guess you're right. Please do take care of me, Trusama. Take care of me, Trusama. Naturally. Make sure you keep on looking after Yuji, all right? Oh, I will. Don't suck his dick. Y yes, of course. Well then, until the day we meet again. Bye bye, Sachi. All right. See you later. Yeah. Goodbye. Forever. What? That ain't. <laughs> With a small wave, Michiru leaves the school, dragging her suitcase behind her. I can't do it. <laughs> Is it just my imagination? Michiru Sama almost seemed to be saying her final goodbyes. I don't know about that. You're probably just overthinking things. I think you might be underthinking things, for once. Is that possible? I think I just think about things normally. No, it's not. It's not normal. I tried to reassure Sachi. Oh, are you comforting? But the fact of the matter is, I'm in agreement with her observation. I'm going to say he knows. Yeah. Michiru left as though i expecting never to see us again. By the way, I am your friend from childhood. It's not going to come up again, but I just thought you'd probably <laughs> yeah. know that. <laughs> Also, Amine knows your sister. What? 
I don't know about the other two. Yeah, we they haven't got, gotten there yet. They got problems, too. Yeah, there's probably something weird. Maybe one of them is your daughter. I, who knows? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> After Michiru finally disappears in the distance, Sachi and I make our way back to the Diormatory. The campus oh, inside back, the Diormatory. back on the campus. <laughs> in a reversal of those summer weeks, this time Michiru is the only one who's vanished from this place. It's going to be a little dull in her absence. Guess I'll have to uh, find some way to kill the time. You're not going to investigate? Like, books. make sure she's actually at the hospital, or... Just going to read some books. Tell her to call you when she gets there? I ended up taking on the role of explaining Michiru's one-week absence from the dorm to our classmates. Cheesy Ru was in an unusually cranky mood, and, well, that pretty much covers it, actually. Grown women can sometimes behave in astonishingly childish ways. Life would probably be a little easier and less aggravating if not for this aspect of female psychology, but I suppose it's often an element of cuteness as well. Although in this particular case, I'm not confident that applies. I am cute. Oh, sorry. That's right. It's just an observational stay. Not much more than a checkup, really. Everyone was aware Michiru had been suffering from anemia, so the news didn't come as that much of a shock. As I carefully stressed that her stay was just to be on the safe side, they accepted my explanation without too much fuss. The problems came after that. Without Michiru around, unexpected quirks began to appear in our daily lives, like an image gradually taking form on a sheet of photo paper. The changes grew more distant with the passage of time. Well, because your lightning, the group lightning rod is gone, so now someone else has to be the brunt of all the jokes. <laughs> yeah, right? I, we never would have expected that Michiru was the nucleus of our, our group right? dynamic. Right? Exactly. <laughs> Finally, I get to talk. I'm best girl, and you're going to notice it eventually. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> uh, what's the matter, Spencer Rattler? Who? A football player. Okay, thank you. Oh, you knew I didn't know. Nothing in particular. That so. All right, then. I'll uh, see you later. I can't wait for how confusing your route's going to be since both our names start with a Y. So am I just, like, <clears throat> never going to give her the fucking pendants? Is that just out the window? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Is that hilarious joke just never going to fucking happen? <laughs> it wasn't funny to be kidding. Fuck you. <laughs> Jesus, she calm moved, down. She moved out and took all of her stuff, uh, except yeah. the pendants. God damn it. <laughs> You really don't know how to be honest with yourself, do you? If you say so. Um, anyway, it's about Irisu-san. Who? Makina. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> A hoe? Something up with Makina? Oh god, there's two, two women now that have problems. Oh, we all have problems. That's why we're here. Oh yeah. It's a little hard to say this, but, um, she's a bit of a nuisance. No. More than a bit. Uh-oh. I am about to cut a bitch. They're naturally finding their new Gary. Uh-huh. A nuisance. Elaborate. Don't misunderstand. I'm not insulting the girl. Sounds like you are. But somehow, she seems, well, a good deal more pushy than usual. Perhaps. Her... I haven't noticed any such thing. Personally, wonder what's going on here. So I have been avoiding her. No, I'll tell you, what is the problem with me? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Yubi-chan. Hey, hey, listen to this. Your parents never loved you. <laughs> well, that's just <laughs> fucking rude. <laughs> it's not even, like, clever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure, later. Uh, a little later, all right? That's what you said yesterday. Come on. What's the deal? Well, huh? Yeah, I don't see the issue. I think you just, you two have never really interacted, so you're just not used to her. <laughs> you are wearing summer colors, but you're clearly an autumn girl. <laughs> Thank you. I agree. Sorry. Take off the fucking sweater and it's be you're better. Like, this shirt is fine on you. Take this off is the not. And you'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> That's my motto. That and everybody wearing chung tonight. <laughs> I don't understand that one, but it's fun. <laughs> I'm a little busy. Oh, yeah, Something, sorry. I don't know. Go the go away. Uh, hmm. That's weird. Hey, Oni-chan. Are you doing something weird to Yumi-chan? We can always tell how how much they've been hanging around Yuji by how many R's they put in their hmms. She hasn't been around enough. That's true. She lost the R. She'll probably match his herm energy, too. And then when they're mad at him, they germ. 
Yeah, Oof, we don't speak of germs. Don't be I'm a germaphobe. <laughs> Forget her. What's with you? No, I'm fine, you know, but that Yubi chan's been a little cold lately. I wonder what her deal is, acting like that all of a sudden. I see, that's interesting. Duh! What's so interesting about that? It's boring as heck! Bzz. You just do yourself a punishment game. Kisses. I refuse. No, okay then. Bzz. Whatever, m mystery whatever game. I'm, I'm getting the idea that you just want to drag me into playing with you. Finally, somebody gets it. <laughs> Look. Well, yeah, I, I guess you could say that. Chiru Chiru ain't around, so... I'm oh, bored. Okay, but Sachi. Like, how often do you just... You could easily... You drag Sachi into shit constantly. Yeah. I don't know. She's spraying some white liquid on the ground. I'm going to get pregnant, so I didn't want to touch it. At this point, the situation finally makes sense. Normally, Makina would be messing around with Michiru on a daily basis. I think this is supposed to be Yuji. Oh. That's true. As she did say, Makina. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I that's be, not out of character for her. But... I would be messing around with Michiru on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> but her favorite target's been absent for a few days now. Instead, oh, yeah. uh, Spine. Stanky legs. Tap. Oh, that, okay. Has been taking the brunt of her mischief. We've all learned to play along with Makina's demented games every once in a while, but a constant barrage of attention would be exhausting. Hence, Not for me. I love attention. Uh, stanky. Uh, Superman, that hoe. It's irritation, which Makina interpreted as hostility. I see, so that's how it is. That girl's been playing an important role in her own right. D huh? What's going on? I'm sure you'll figure it out soon enough. It'll be interesting to see what other effects emerge, if any. Huh? Oni-chan, I don't understand what you're even talking about anymore. H have you ever? He? Ha. Oh. Ha. Oh. So very tired. Oh, and now it's Sachi. What's wrong? Well, I was just carrying out everyone's request, like always. But for some reason, I find myself considerably more worn out than usual. There's a lot of shit in her room. No, oh, did you get the candy I asked for? Yes, I bought it for you. Here's your tasty twist. Thank God. That's what Twizzlers I call my dick. Stuck. Yay, sticker surprise tasties. I'm an alien lets me have a tiny bit of candy every day, you know. I would have a Chiru Chiru secretly supplement me from her stash. But without... Oh, wait, what? <laughs> but without her around, my tummy's been a grumbling is something fierce. Ichiru's constantly doing you favors, isn't she? Duh? Come on, I'm always helping that thing out too. It's all good. I give her purpose in life by doing things for me. <laughs> I tell her how to have sex with you. Wait, what? You just hawk to her and spit on that thing. <laughs> Not referring to her as a thing might have a step in the right direction. <laughs> Throw it back like it's expired. Come to think of it, when Major Usama requests some, she'll often give me information about where the items on my list are being sold. I've been missing that assistance lately, and I don't have the internet. <laughs> For some reason, everyone seems to request limited edition products more frequently. Preliminary investigation and careful planning are often necessary to track them down. So it's relatively tiring. Especially without the internet. <laughs> From the sound of things, Michiru's been playing middleman between the others. Casually helping out and smoothing a lot of minor problems over. Or at least the other Michiru hat was. Yeah. Probably. Guess it makes sense. Sachi does so many chores as the school's made that it'd have to get stressful without a little assistance. I noticed those quotations. I'm a real name, you fuck. <laughs> I've noticed Michiru's act of kindness once or twice before, but I haven't realized that her behind-the-scenes support played this large of a role in the group's normal dynamic. Well, then, please excuse me. <sighs> Sachi, come on, I'm doing the why. Are you ever going to become the and? <laughs> Sachi looks hella worn out. Hmm, tasty, tasty, hella tasty. You that's talking their, about her butt? That's their slogan. <sighs> oh shit, run! <laughs> it's the fuzz! <laughs> hmm? What's wrong, Amadi? I had Sachi and buy some stuff for me. Hey, me too! But this isn't quite what I asked for. Ooh, gonna have her take it back? Oh shit, she gonna be the black licorice kind. <laughs> no, I mean, Sachan has a really strong sense of responsibility, you know. 
a little too strong, frankly. It's a little hard to point out our mistakes or whatever. No, I guess you have a point there. No, what a pain in the ass. If Michiru was around, I could probably just swap with her, but... So not having Chiru or Chiru around sucks for you too, Omini? Well, I don't know. It's just a little... Yeah, I guess it kind of sucks. Never gonna learn what a fucking tsundere is. <laughs> right. I see. Her over-the-top tsundere act. Fuck you. You did that. <laughs> <laughs> Tends to draw all the attention. Oh, let me make a note. <laughs> but the girl's surprisingly helpful with the little things. Overly helpful. So, is Sachi also a tsundere? <laughs> uh, kind of. <laughs> Whoa! Come on. It's gotta be a coincidence. I mean... Chiru Chiru is sort of an idiot, you know? Well, I won't deny she's a little naive at times. Oh, what's all this? You know, I thought Yuji and Michiru were getting friendlier lately. Something going on with you two? Depends on your definition of something. Wow, way to be a tease. You have no idea. We had <laughs> sex. Oh, gross. Okay, Michiru should be... Uh, that did, that scene didn't seem like it was over yet, but right. okay. Should be back in another two days or so. I'm curious about the results of her examination. I'm not going to call her or anything, but I've decided to refrain from contacting her beforehand for some reason. <laughs> Probably better not give the girl too much to think about right now. Yeah, I wouldn't want her to think I like her or anything. Okay. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully she'll return before these small stresses the group's been undergoing build up into anything troublesome. Uh, Kazumi -kun. Could you find me some fall outfits? <laughs> Everyone keeps make funning, making fun of this sweater. What well, sucks? Here to file another Don't complaint buds at the top. about Makina? Uh, no, nothing like that. I was just thinking. I God never had the chance to hand these over. This is like my only thing for this route. <laughs> Give me this. I get one thing. <laughs> Um, super super soldier serum this time Ugh. Uh, it hands me a number of souvenir flags from her vacation a half dozen to be exact are these for Michiru that's right I did want to give them to her myself but I couldn't quite find the right moment and now it just seems not funny <laughs> what seemed to be getting along with her lately so, I thought you might be able to pass them on for me? Yeah, I'll throw them away for you. Understood, I'll pass them on. Can I just tell her they're souvenirs from Super Sailor Shredder? Sailor Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Super Shredder works, too. Well, yes. Gonna make it harder for ourselves to try to alliterate every time now. <laughs> Not that you really have to. If I hand her six pennants without saying a word, she'll probably just be confused. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's even funnier than my original plan. Oh, true. Yes. That would be fine. All right. Thank you. Huh? I am expressing gratitude on Michiru's behalf. Thanks for the souvenirs. Uh, okay. Sure. Goodbye, then. You're so weird. I, I spent, like, way too much money on those. The joke, I don't even I'm not giving do up on this joke. I don't even get to do the joke. <laughs> Gotta get things prepared for a smooth return. Since our maid is currently exhausted, maybe I should tidy up Michiru's room oh in her place. God. How many days has it been? And now you're gonna find out that she has she didn't leave any of her stuff. Yeah. Then again, fiddling around in a woman's room without permission strikes me as a bit questionable. Also, to be honest, pretty, pretty damn embarrassing if anyone noticed me doing it. Yeah, you're totally fine with. You know, fucking putting the screws to her while people are on the other side of the door, though. <laughs> right. Well, I'm sure Sachi will be willing to do it. Overworked as she may be, maybe I'll pick her up an energy drink. That's what we need. Mumbling to myself, I leave the Diorm and head for the convenience store. Just kidding, I go to the Dior. <laughs> <laughs> convenience store looks a lot like my room. <laughs> Our routines may have been disrupted by Michiru's absence. But I haven't been neglecting, neg neglecting my training. Running through nature every morning gives you an intimate understanding of the passing of the seasons. These last few days, the air rushing past me has carried a smell, a smell suggestive of the imminent end of summer. My moment. <laughs> Having finished my daily marathon, 
I took a quick shower in my room. Michiru should be back tomorrow. But it doesn't per feel particularly real yet. Not that I doubt she'll be returning. Why not? But this was a purely observatory stay. So the real question is what results the hospital's examinations will have produced. Not surprising that I'd still feel a little uneasy, I suppose. It is I, Komen Isachi. No need for the formalities. Come in. I'm naked. <laughs> so am I. Certainly. Please excuse me. Sachi enters my room, her expression slightly troubled. Do we have a situation of some sort? God! What's wrong? You've got a gloomy look on your face. Well, yes. I actually have something to discuss regarding Michiru-sama. Michiru? Did you hear something about her? Not exactly. No, it doesn't concern Michiru-sama herself, but rather her room. Oh my goodness, what could it be? <laughs> Someone left a cat, a dead cat in there for like a few weeks. Oh, yeah, we never buried that. <laughs> so what happened then? Let's hear the details. Yes, I would gladly elaborate. As you know, I was interested with the cleaning of Mitri Sama's room in her absence. Therefore, I recently tied up the room, vacuumed the carpet, and finished by wiping off the floor with a dust cloth. And I found some juices. I was going to say... I investigated the place with a black light. But, well, there was one final problem I didn't quite know how to handle. Herm. Butterfingers style dilemma, perhaps? Yeah, I'm a regular Bart Simpson. <laughs> Knock something fragile over? Better not lay a finger on my butterfinger. <laughs> no, buttery fingers were not involved. I don't like them. They get stuck in my teeth. The problem <laughs> in question was a box. A box? What's in the box? Yes, a small box with a lock. I attempted to open it because I'm nosy, so as to put the contents in order, but this proved impossible without tools. Therefore, I fetched an electric saw, plunged it into the outlet in Mitru Sama's room, and threw the switch. But I did it blade first, and I got the shot. <laughs> the ver 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 the murder murder mur mur murder the murder 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 was quite pleasant to heat to the ear. I was fully prepared to split the insulate piece of furniture in twain, but at that moment a certain doubt struck me. Tee chainsaw go brrrr. <laughs> Is it really acceptable for me to destroy another's belongings with an electric saw, no less? Should I use a handsaw? <laughs> if some were to fall and break in the course of my cleaning, that would be divine providence, so I wouldn't be in the wrong, so I hooked it against the wall. However, would it really be alright to produce the same effect intentionally? If only I had thought to inquire how much I could destroy when Mitru Sama made a request. I would never have come to this, but alas. Plus, I was told to clean up Michiru's mess, so if I made a mess with the box, that would thus be my mess, so then I wouldn't know if I should clean it up or not. <laughs> <laughs> I see. All right, then. I'll take care of that box. That should resolve your issue, right? Yes, I do think I would appreciate that. Here's the key to Michiru Sama's room. Well, then, I still have much work to attend to, so I'll excuse myself. Sachi promptly bows and leaves the room. I drop the key on my desk and then fall back onto my bed. I don't need to do anything about this right now. <laughs> or ever. I have no plans of actually doing anything about this box. <sighs> Considering that it's locked, there's probably something Michiru doesn't want us seeing inside. No need to go out of my way to poke around. It's a heart. I was going to say. Was She's she... Davy Jones. <laughs> she cut out her own heart. I pick up a paperback and begin reading once more. But... Before I'm halfway through the page, there's another knock at my door. Um, Kazami-san? What's wrong, Sachi? I broke it. As a matter of fact, I pressed my ear to your door in order to monitor the situation inside, and for some reason I heard the sound of a key being tossed aside, and then the sound of a human body falling onto a bed, and then there was a <laughs> noise. <laughs> Finally, there was the sound of rustling paper as though someone was beginning to read a book. I think it was the girl with the dragon tattoo. Herm! But it sounded like exactly 482 pages long. I'm sure this is a simple misunderstanding on my part. Surely you wouldn't think it's not like I have to worry about one little box. Cosmic Sun, San, Son, whatever. I always get it wrong. Surely you would never n neglect your promise to trusting classmate Komeni Sachi. Calm yourself. I was just about to head over. The fuck you were! What? There's I, at least 374 <laughs> more pages in that book! I do apologize to think I nearly doubted my trustworthy friend. Not a problem. Anyway, yes, I'm planning to go. Hmm. Fuck, I need to go get Michiru back. <laughs> what now? Oh, nothing. I'm simply maintaining my vigil until you actually leave. Just to be on the safe side, 
I was entrusted with cleaning Mitri Sama's room, so well, my mission isn't complete until that final box is taken care of. Now that I passed on one aspect of that task to Kazumi-san, if by some reason remote chance you were to think, what's the big deal, it's just one little box and neglect your... Alright, alright, I'm not ne neglecting anything. I keep s uh, skipping on that word for some, for some reason. <laughs> you want me to go immediately, right? Yes, you have my sincerest gratitude. I'm like three pages into a chapter, and if I stop now, I'm going to have to read those pages again. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Open the box! <laughs> <laughs> it's a embarrassing photo of me at the Christmas party! <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? I'm going to take care of the box. You can leave now. Understood. Ah, Komani Sachi shall wait outside the door until you have completed dealing with this box in question. And then leave. And then I will go tell everybody that you are handling each of these box. <laughs> Please don't do that. You're such a handful. I Fine. can be. <laughs> Got it. Just wait until I'm done. Yes. No. Oh. It looks the same. I entered to find the room sparkling clean and neatly organized. Just as Sachi said. Uh, are you sure? There's a method to that madness. Right. The only thing even slightly out of place is the small box resting on Michiru's bed. That's a cat. <laughs> it's an unassuming, simple little wooden chest, but notably solid and sturdy. You can imagine a pirate stashing treasure in this thing. Or a heart. Probably a handmade product from some local general store. Seems fairly well worn from years of use. Sachi, are you still out there? Yes. Sachi responds instantly. She's clearly hovering just outside, waiting for me to deal with the box. Feels like I've gotten roped into an explosive ordnance disposal detail. Is it dead? <laughs> Taking the box in my hands, I begin to fiddle around idly with the lock. Herm, she probably used the key. <laughs> that was the room key. <laughs> you absolutely determined to have me look inside this thing? Oh, that's right. I think that would be best. After all, I was interested with the cleaning of this room. It may only be a small box, but to neglect it would be to neglect my... All right, all right. Just hold on a minute. Yes. Well then, what's the next move? I'm naturally a bit reluctant to open Michiru's private property without her approval. I could call her, but I won't. That said, I can't exactly stand around here all day. I have to think of some excuse to persuade Swatch. Swatch, Swatchy. Swatchy, my friend. <laughs> Where did you find this? Let's see. It was just sitting on top of the desk, I believe. I see. That sounds clean and organized enough. Yeah. If she didn't hide the thing... Does that mean she doesn't particularly mind if someone looks inside? There's a lock on it. Tricky judgment call. Is it? <laughs> Crap, I was just playing around with the box absentmindedly. Ah, uh, broke. <laughs> Oops. But, but I seem to have gotten the thing open without even realizing it. Curse my instinctive kleptomania. It's like him, you rob and take it a sledgehammer to Barney's suitcase or briefcase and be <laughs> yeah. like, Oops, it's open. <laughs> a mechanism this easily picked barely even counts as a lock anyways. It doesn't count. <laughs> Surely you'd guard anything you really wanted to protect a little more securely. Guess it hardly matters now that I've opened it. May as well have a look. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, to be honest. On the map, yeah. Uh-oh, it opened all on its own. I'm a little curious myself, and I've half convinced myself of the dubious theory that the girl actually wanted someone to look inside. Well, whatever my excuse, I open Mitru's box and peer inside. Wouldn't be the first time. What's this? The Cosme Town is, is something the matter? Sorry, be quiet for a second. Fuck. I can't masturbate when you keep talking. There are several small notebooks and a number of photographs inside. The majority of the pictures seem to have been taken before I arrive at the school. Mainly casual snapshots and group photos featuring Michiru's classmates. But it's always through bushes. <laughs> but in each and every one, Michiru's face has been cut out of the image. The rest is left intact, removing only herself from the world, but preserving the others carefully. I thoroughly examine the photographs one by one. There's a shot of Michiru's sandwich between Makina and Amine. Hot. Michiru <laughs> leaning against a slightly embarrassed... Uh, I wasn't prepared. Me neither. Uh, sandwich. Or, yeah, sandwich. <laughs> Michiru having her shoulders massaged by Sachi. Hot. And in every case, Michiru's face alone is precisely snipped out with scissors. At a glimpse, these all appear to have been taken in happy moments, but that's probably exactly why she did this. 
Michiru must have felt that she didn't belong there. The girl must have been unable to accept the presence of her false self in these happy scenes. The notebooks are filled with memos written in small characters. Notes on the performance she's been putting on in this school. There are also extensive itemized... Pretending to drown. <laughs> <laughs> no. Knocked them dead. There are also extensive itemized lists concerning Sister Christian, Amine, Makina, and Zachi's likes and dislikes. Notes on what makes them upset and happy. Clearly accumulated through careful trial and error. It's like someone playing Stardew Valley without access to the wiki. <laughs> Seems pretty clear that the girl was using this as a reference for her many small acts of kindness. <laughs> that girl. What a psycho. My honest thoughts slip out of my mouth against my will. Is an idiot. Even after all this effort, Michiru didn't exactly pull off the charade, did she? Sometimes her act was more convincing than others, but as a whole, she was just trying way too hard. That tsundere character must have been part of her plans as well. But I saw through it on the very first day. Did you? Did you? Yeah, I don't know. First day of this route. <laughs> I didn't finish my sentence, but even so, oh, sorry. she stuck with it. Of course everyone else knows that's not her true nature. Also, wait, what? And, of course, everyone else also knows that's not her true nature. Do they? Yeah, because she was terrible at it. She kept, like, forgetting to act the way. Oh, that's true. Even so, she stuck with it, convinced that playing the clown was the only way she could be anything but a nuisance. I'll give her an A for effort, but seriously. Handwriting seems to be another weakness of Michiru's. I just rip on her. Her thoughts and feelings spill out across the pages and characters that even the most generous observer would have to call sloppy. Well, she wasn't expecting anyone else to read it. <laughs> I'm only laughing at first. The earnest notes on her classmates and dubious strategies for forming smooth relationships eventually give way to a diary. <gasps> and its contents are largely occupied with the terror she feels towards her other self. Flipping through the pages, I jump through the story in chronological order. I mean, yeah, why would you read that out of chronological <laughs> order? Oh, God. May 5.15. Oh, well, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. My, my heart started hurting yeah. again today. I thought I was used to it by now, but the pain gets so strong it feels like my body's going to burst. When bad things like this happen, all I want to do is run away from reality. The world's scary. There's spiders. Still, I've got to live <laughs> in it. I don't Have think I've seen Australia. <laughs> I'm not going there. Either. Things are fucking huge. Fucking hunter spiders. Jesus. I don't think I can possibly be of any real use to anyone, but I don't want to be a nuisance either. I don't want any more gaps in my memory. It's really scary. I'm really scared that one day I'm not going to be myself anymore, and I might kiss a boy. Shit, I kissed the boy! <laughs> May 19th. I was just talking with everybody when I sort of blacked out for a second. Or I thought it was a second. Apparently a fairly long time passed. It didn't really seem like anything went wrong this time, but I'm scared something like before will happen again. Gotta take my medicine to make sure it doesn't. Gotta make sure I don't stop being me. Gotta be a good girl. May 25th. Four itchy tasty. <laughs> <laughs> the guy transferred <laughs> into the school today. He seems to be <laughs> suspicious about my personality. Gotta do a better job. Gotta be a good girl. I think it's like the beginning of August currently. I haven't really been. Yeah, well, attention. it's the end of summer. Yeah, it's the end oh, of summer. that's right. Duh. I, was um, say, I think I've noticed it been like it, like the end of July. Yeah. I think the yeah, because they left for something. summer break and now school's starting up again. Yeah. May thirtieth. Goo. I don't really get you, G. Can't figure him out. Is he angry all the time or what? Hope he doesn't hate me or anything. I'm not so good with smart people. They tend to look down on me. Maybe he's not actually smart and he just uses big words to make it seem like he's smart. <laughs> but it kind of feels like Yuji's looking down on everyone. He's kind of tall. Not just me. I don't really get it. July, June 10th. <laughs> I don't know the months. Beauty Magazine Day. Losing <laughs> <laughs> my memories usually means something bad. But today a nice thing happened. I don't remember how, but I found a cat near the sea. A small black guy with squishy little pink pads on his feet. He was really cute. Would they get mad at me if I feed him? June 13th. The cat was friendly today. It made me happy. Did he like the cheese-flavored fish paste I gave him? I don't really like it. But it's the only <laughs> food I have. I'll try wonton next time. I bet he shit a lot. <laughs> but I know I shouldn't get too <laughs> friendly either. If the cat leaves me, I'd re feel really lonely. I don't know what I'd do if he goes away. Oh, don't shit. do it again. Don't do it again. <laughs> June 17th. You just saw me playing with the cat today. It was really embarrassing. Uh, July Jeez. 22nd. I kissed a boy and I liked it. For the first time in my life. Or rather, I got kissed. Why did you do that? I don't understand. 
I don't understand anything about that guy. I never have. I don't know if I can even look him in the eye anymore. It's kind of ugly. Because he's too tall. Stupid, juicy, hot Yuji. So fucking hot and juicy, but stupid. Uh, uh, July 25th. Stupid Yuji. <laughs> stupid sexy Flanders. July 28th. Stupid Yuji. <laughs> Sounds like everyone's going to leave for summer vacation. There's no way I can spend two weeks all alone with Yuji. What am I supposed to do? I'm going to pretend to like him. <laughs> August 2nd. I went on for 10 day with Yuji. It was all fake, so I don't want to lose anything. I mean, there isn't anything there to lose in the first place. I want to do it again. Very much so. He gave me lots of rocks as a present. I was really happy. I'll treasure them. I put... Oh, that was what's in her bag. Oh. August 7th. So that's what she took with her. Yep. We gave the cat a name. Meowmel. Kind of weird name, but a very special one. Is it really going to be okay? Maybe he'll run off somewhere now. I'm really scared of that. August 12th. The others came back. I'm happy, but it's kind of scary, too. Yuji doesn't just belong to me anymore. Of course, we were just playing make-believe all along, so it's okay. It's fun to have everyone here again, but it's a little painful, too. They keep punching She's me. She's not as emotional of a writer as I thought she'd be. No. Matter just of fact, to the point. Right. Stating what Well, because she's not day. putting on the mask. I guess, yeah. August 14th. My heart hurts. It's so weird. This isn't good. I, I lost my voice for a second. <laughs> it's not good. Not at all. There's another me. I mean, who isn't me? Hey, are you reading this too? Where are you? Fight me, bitch. <laughs> August 16th. Yeah, I'm almost gone. I knew it. I knew he'd leave me. August 17th. Yeah, see, like... I feel terrible. Very matter-of-fact in her diary. Yeah. It's like there's a thick fog inside my head. There maybe, we go. Maybe I don't belong here anymore. <laughs> you can do better, right? Much, much better. I'm sure of it. August 18th. Please, I can't do this anymore. You take over, please. August 20th. Is she, like, hoping the other her will respond, or...? Yeah, she's trying to get the other the other one to take over. Today I got Yuji to sleep with me. Yay! Made me really happy. <laughs> so then I told Yuji everything. I told him about you. I told him lots and lots of things. What do you think of that, Miss Thang? <laughs> I was really happy, but also scared. I was afraid he might hate me. Tomorrow I'm going to the hospital, and I think this is it for me. I have memory memories with Yuji now and a lot of rocks. Oops. Uh, that's good enough ending. I just want to disappear. I'm too scared. Maybe it'll all fall apart with Yuji. Maybe someday I'll have to say goodbye to everyone at school. And I can't take anymore. I just couldn't endure anything like that again. I lied. This is the bad ending. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> so I'm just going to end it now, okay? Please answer me. I hated you a lot at first. I thought you were a terrible person, but I was wrong, wasn't I? So maybe you could do me a little favor just this once. Please, I'm begging you. Answer me. August 21st. It's a pleasure to meet you. I never expected I need to convey my feelings to you this way, but here we are. First of all, I want to apologize for using your body without your knowledge. But please believe me, my intentions were good. I knew how hard you were trying and how much you were suffering, and I tried to help you out. I'm sorry it didn't work out that way. I wanted to become your best friend, always nestled close to your side, ready to lend a hand when you ran into trouble. But I had to use your hands. I wanted to stroke your head and kiss your cheek. That's really hard to do. But that the lonely nights, so that the lonely nights wouldn't feel so frightening. But I ended up hurting you instead. I'm really, I'm yeah, very sorry. Don't talk about disappearing. If anyone has to disappear, that should be my role. This body is yours, remember? So please, let them examine you properly. Please go on living. Is she going to get an exorcism? I don't know. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you as well. I didn't think you'd actually respond, so this was a real surprise. It's early in the morning right now, and I've got to go to the hospital soon. I'm a little worried if I'll be able to write the write a proper reply. You just should be coming to pick me up any minute. You really are kind and smart. I think you're better suited to being me than I am. I'm a stupid, clumsy idiot, and my boobs are too perfect. So even when <laughs> I try really hard, it never turns out right, and I'm scared of losing even more than I already have. Oh my god, I know, right? They're so <laughs> fucking great. When I start feeling really sad, sometimes I'll start falling through darkness all of a sudden. Yeah, I take over your body just to fill up your boobs. <laughs> sometimes I just wake up in the middle of the night, feel you up, and go back. And <laughs> like someone opened a trap door into my feet. And then, like, I don't fall until I look down. I guess that must be when you come to the surface and play the role of me. But then I try to run, but it doesn't move. Yeah, it just makes that weird, like, blah, 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 noise. That says, uh-oh, and then I fall. Yeah. Fucking acne. Giving me the wrong trap door. I hug my knees and curl up in the blackness, squeezing my eyes tightly shut. But when the dark gets so scary that I can't take it anymore, I open my eyes in search of light. It's kind of like that movie Get Out. 
And that's when I switch places with you and return to this world. But I'm sorry, I'm done with that now. Next time that happens, I'm going to stay in the dark. I'm never going to open my eyes again. I mean, that way you're going to take over from me forever, right? Sorry for making this all, all complicated. Either way, I'm done. I'll leave everything to you from now on. I think you can do what I couldn't. I think you can live without having everyone hate you. Without losing anything. Sorry for being so selfish. Call me Long John Silvers because I sell fish. <laughs> Sorry for pushing this on to you. <laughs> Say hi to Yuji for me. Uh, you was that the other girl that left? Like, she's like, well... No, this is... I know, original. But, but like... Uh... She's saying that she just wants to disappear and have the other Michi Two take over. Yeah. So like, did Michi Two? Michi Two is the one who, who the one who left. It's maybe. Like, like I, well, I guess. This is the this, this is, is the way it. to yeah. Say hi to Yuji for me. You don't have to tell him I loved him or anything. Just stay friends with him forever, please. Yeah, totally. And she said, "I love you." That was Michi Two. Yeah. Um. Somebody just knocked on my door. Yuji must be here. Once I leave for maybe. the hospital, I won't be able to see him again or any of the others. So I guess this is goodbye. Okay, maybe not. And after all this thinking, I still end up feeling really sad. Life is just a chain of loss, isn't it? It kind of sucks. So very, very, very painful. I'm going to become a nihilist. You're just calling for me from beyond the door. I should stop writing, but I can't. I loved hearing him call my name. Guess I'll be a little selfish at the end. Make him say it lots of times. <laughs> That's not too much to ask, right? When I hear him say my name, my heart always beats fast. Uh, oh, maybe I'm having another heart attack. I'm gonna, I really got to go now. Goodbye. The, okay, then. That's an episode. Is it? Okay. I mean, we're probably a couple s s sentences away from the end of the scene. But yeah, but... We're past our... We may... Yeah, yeah, there may only be one episode left. I don't Ooh. know how long this ending is. That's true. Because but... Amine's ending was so long. Well, Amine's ending... the Her backstory... Before her choice... Because I guess after the choice, it was over pretty her quickly. Her backstory before the choice was super long. Yeah. That's but that true. seems to be how these go is like you get their backstory then you get the choice and then you get the fallout kind of does the final scene. yeah because sachi's was decently long too michiru's was actually shorter than the other two yeah well we haven't even gone to see her yet so there's still that's true we still have to like figure out the we, yeah we don't even really understand why she's possessed yeah like, is it, i mean is it really just the heart it's not it's there's definitely something else going on there i mean it's it's a mental thing like she's she's hiding behind it i mean it could be there have been like reports of people feeling like their taste change that is true like people's taste change after transplants and things yeah. like that and like it's like oh it's the person's soul and yeah i don't know but i don't think it's to this extent where the person completely takes them over or anything like they're possessed by a ghost yeah that's definitely her brain like coping well Kind of like Sachi with the, I will follow any mm -hmm. command, because that's how she coped. Yeah, it seems like they've all kind of done that in some different way. I yeah. Mean, I mean, Amine did that too, just with self-punishment. And sucking dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I solved my problems we too. We didn't get to see it though. I know, because we didn't have the right... We need to go back. Just start over. Redo the route. And you, speaking of going back, you gotta save over some old stuff here. Yep. Oh, look how long ago that was. Holy crap. 2020, August 14th of 2020. Almost four years ago. That is insane. Yeah. All right. Well, see you next time. For possibly the conclusion? Probably not. I'm sure we got like two or three more episodes in us. Give me a grenade! I gotta go explain this Arrival to of the Mystery Blonde. Who could it be? Mm -hmm.